The Cape Leopard Trust to me, it's not just about leopards. It's about the whole ecosystem. It's about other animals. And really, what one is seeing here is the significance of understanding the leopard as a mirror for other species, including a mirror for the human being. How do you bring an animal to life that you can never see? People don't realise how elusive they are. You know, they're the ghost cats of the mountain. It is so special to be able to know that you are making a small difference towards ensuring the persistence of this animal for future generations. The Cape Labour Trust is an NGO. Research is one component of what the Cape Leopard Trust does. Applied conservation is a very big component and then environmental education. Those three are the pillars of what we do. I love this area. It's beautiful, you know, it's in my blood and it speaks to me. Hell, oh, but it's another thing if you really understand some of the science of it as well. Research has been vital in the past and it was the, the origin of the Cape Leopard Trust was research and finding out more about these cats. It is one of the great survivors. You find them all over Africa. These animals are well, well worth protecting. And I just think it's that greater awareness which has become so important. You can only base concrete decisions on how to protect these leopards if you know what they do and where they roam and how many they are. These cats having such a huge home range and territory that they roam, it's really important to keep larger areas available to them and to have between these areas corridors so that they can move through and that's really important and it's difficult with the increase in human population. We need to identify these corridors and ensure that even though that will be on private land, that those corridors remain intact. Through looking at the diet, we found that less than 5-7% to 7 of the diet consists of livestock. So it shows us that livestock is not a main component of their prey. So it helps us also to educate the landowners on what is actually happening in the, in the whole ecosystem. We worked very closely with farmer communities, creating awareness about the leopards and also highlighting certain things that they can do for mitigating the conflict. Ons boer op die klingskaal met boerbokke, skaap en dan rooibelstier. Maar ons het een baie groot probleem met die roofdieren. As die leipert en die rooikat nou vang van die bokke, behal wel dat het financiële inpak op ons leven zet as die mense verschrikkelijk kwaad. Kijk, hulle wil net die hoofdieren doodmaak. Maar in die tussentijd het Cape Leopard terras werk baie nauw saam die gemeenskap. Hulle is baie ingelig by al die groot mense, die oom mense. Hulle het nou baie meer kennis van die hoofdieren. So dat, dat gaan baie beter. Ek het selfe leipert gesien by een paar geleentere en dat is, om hem net te sien, is een voorrecht. So, ek sal aan van hou oors nou as gemeenskap, dat oors die kinders dit ook kan herleef. In an area like the Boerland, over the past few years, we've come to realize that the main threat there is actually the setting of illegal wire snares. And there's a twofold threat to leopards in the sense that the prey animals that the leopards are supposed to be catching, those wire snares are taken out of the system. And then the leopards can themselves also be caught in those snares. So it is a practice that we really would like to stop. The education program that we have at the Cape Leopard Trust has got a number of activities. 
Our flagship is the wilderness camps, where we bring groups out to come and camp for them to experience nature, just to create a bit of awareness about human wildlife conflict and also teach more about the leopards. We're at the Stutzel Rock Art site and we bring our participants here to introduce heritage, what it means and how important it is to conserve the animals that we care for. And uh, here we have the example of elephants that used to roam freely in the Cedarburg and you don't find them anymore because of them being eradicated. And so leopards face similar problems nowadays and in this way we try to make the connection of how important it is to conserve our animals for future. It's fostering an appreciation for the natural world, getting them to be custodians of leopards and their prey and their habitat, that's the ultimate goal. Conservation isn't just about animals, it's about people as well. And the largest proportion of the leopard's habitat is on private land. So if you do not involve and educate people owning this land about the importance of these animals, uh, then half the battle is lost to collaborate with other conservation bodies to find ways that our work can complement theirs and that we build a stronger conservation message together. If people know things, they have the knowledge, it creates power and you know, that triggers also that interest because we can't stand alone doing what we do without the people's involvement and interest and care. If we look at the leopard as the, the keeper of the keys in terms of the ecology, then we have to make sure that that leopard survives. It's, it's an animal which allows us to look into ourselves, you know. Why? Because there's a leopard in us. So there's a lion in us. There's an elephant in us. Let's be a voice for them. Let's be a voice for the voiceless, for the small. And that's what it is. It's just little by little. Do what you do and do it well and do it with love.